When considering the importance of developing a church planting team, it's essential to note that there is no one solution for every context. In other words, there's more than one good way to cultivate a great church planting team. However, planting a reproducing, multiplying church that is effectively engaging its context, I think will no doubt involve some team dynamics that are informed by what I call the five-fold typology of Ephesians 4. Now, if you're not familiar with the APEST from Ephesians 4, A-P-E-S-T, it is simply an acronym that stands for Apostle, Prophet, Evangelist, Shepherd, and Teacher. Let me give you a very simple, concise overview of each of those gifts, and then let's discuss a couple of key aspects of that passage, as well as the implications I think this should have on team development. So first, what is meant by each of those five gifts? First off, the Apostle. The word apostle literally means sent one. The Latin form of this word is missio, which is where we get our English word mission. Those with an apostolic gifting are most responsible to activate the missionary sentness of the church. They are pioneers. They're the ones that like to start things. So that's the apostle. The prophet is the one who questions and reforms. Those with more of a prophetic gifting are very sensitive to what God has them to, to know and hear, and what's important to God. They often have a sense of what truth needs to be emphasized for a particular time and place. They're quick to recognize the gap between what is and what should be, both within the church, but also how the church ought to engage in the brokenness in the city. The evangelists are the recruiters to the cause. They are the bearers of good news. They, they have a, often an attractional quality to their ministry. Then the shepherd is the one who protects and provides. Shepherds have a very natural instinct for, to protect the community from danger and provide for its needs on both an individual level, but also on a communal level. They often notice when people are alone or hurting and they feel drawn to nurture the spiritual and communal health of the church. And then finally, the teacher is the one who understands and likes to explain. Teachers find great satisfaction in helping people learn truth, and gain wisdom. They typically grasp complex truths and then help other people understand those truths. Now, with just a very simple, basic understanding of each of the gifts, I wanna share with you just several fascinating aspects of this passage. First, historically, we've interpreted this text, Ephesians chapter four, as a leadership text. You could say we've actually interpreted it as a clergy text, in other words, we've interpreted this passage historically that these gifts were given to the clergy or to leaders so they could equip the saints for the work of ministry. But I would argue the fact is this is not a leadership text. Instead, it is a body text. In other words, these are gifts given to the body so we all are involved in the equipping of the saints. In other words, if you have the gift of evangelism, you should be equipping others to be evangelistic. If you have the gift of teaching, you should be equipping others to be better teachers. A second key aspect of this passage is that all of these gifts are not roles, they are not offices, but instead they are gifts, they are callings. You might even call them wirings of the people in the body of Christ. I don't even like to use the word apostle or prophet, but instead I like to talk about people that are apostolic, or people that have a prophetic gift. So just remember, these are gifts, not offices. But perhaps the most fascinating aspect of this passage for me, it says that if all five of the gifts are not being exercised within the body, the church will not reach maturity. In fact, it says the church will not experience the fullness of Christ. And I think it's pretty easy to argue that much of the church today isn't mature. And I would say, at least in part, that's because since the time of Constantine in, in 312 AD, the church has been shaped largely by two of these gifts. It's been led by and shaped by the shepherd teacher. And unfortunately, the more apostolic or prophetic and evangelistic gifts 
have been marginalized, and in some cases, those gifts have actually left the church to start other ministries or other organizations. But the main point I want you to get is that this idea or concept of APEST is crucially important for the health and maturity of the body. But practically speaking, how do you go about incorporating APEST into the development of a church planting team? Well, one way I like to frame this conversation is by sharing these four sequential points. Number one, the church planter needs to first understand their own gifting relating to APEST because it will influence where they focus much of their ministry. For example, if you are a teacher, you'll often move very quickly to the Sunday gathering so you can teach. If you're a shepherd, you may move or kind of lean towards the gathered community so you can care and protect the flock. The second point is that the planter needs to understand the makeup of their church planting team and recognize what gifts may be missing. If you're a gifted shepherd, then you need to make sure you have someone more apostolic on your team or you will never start something new. But likewise, if you're highly apostolic or prophetic, you must have a shepherd on your team or you will likely push people too hard and run the risk of burnout. Then number three, the planter will need to determine how each gift will have equal input into the ministry and mission of the church plant. Remember, a key aspect of this passage is that the church will not reach maturity unless all five gifts are being activated and exercised. Therefore, how will you make sure that each gift is being listened to by those that may see things a little differently? And then fourth, the team will need to determine how to ensure the equipping, the equipping of the saints. In other words, how will the church encourage and empower those with the gift of teaching to equip other teachers? How will those that have an apostolic calling fan the flames of other sent ones? How will the gifted evangelists equip others who have an evangelistic calling? Remember, a church plant that can bring together each of these APES gifts adds a necessary ingredient to the overall missional fitness and maturity of the church. But each gifting needs to be informed and shaped by the other gifts to anchor the church in the fullness of Christ and engage more fully in God's redemptive mission.